it's uh, about 2.30 in the morning and uh, getting ready to hit the road to head up to the uh, airport. Got about an hour and 20 minute drive and uh, I have to go kick Jason's rack and make sure he's up and get him a cup of coffee too. <laughs> yeah, didn't get any sleep last night. So we just finished up a magnificent breakfast. This is the wonderful South Bend Airport. And uh, yeah, we get a little one hour flight before we run over, oh, we get a little one hour flight to Chicago before we jump on our flight to Las Vegas. So this is where Mayor Pete's from. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. So recently we had the opportunity to travel down to Las Vegas, Nevada to visit the Arsenal facilities and they invited us down to show us a brand new product that they're going to showcase at SHOT Show 2020, so they gave us kind of a sneak preview. We only had a few hours while we were there. We were basically, we flew in the morning, we had uh, time to grab a quick bite to eat while we talked about the new product, and we quickly went out to the range, and the next morning we were flying home. So we only had a few hours with the new product, but in that time we learned quite a bit about what they're calling the AK-20. If you know anything about Arsenal, Arsenal has imported AKs from different countries, Russia, Bulgaria, things like that, but they've also manufactured classic series rifles right here in the United States. So there's a couple of different things going on that Arsenal wanted to let us know about. First of all, they're going to be manufacturing completely US made AKs in the United States. Secondly, the first product in that line is going to be the AK-20. And what the AK-20 is, is laying here in front of me in pieces. We don't have the complete AK-20 rifle here to show you guys, but we have components of it and one of my existing milled receiver arsenal rifles to show you how those components are going to work with the new rifle. So let's delve into what the AK-20 is. What Arsenal has done is they started with leaving this section of the rifle alone the bolt carrier trigger mechanism receiver. This is what we all know, trust and love, the AK-47. This wasn't the focus of their attention. The front half of the AK is where the AK-20 focuses its attention. So ultimately, the entire gun will be built here in the United States. We're told the early custom shop guns will have machine components which is more expensive, and they may have some import parts, but by the time they get to full production, they will be using all USA made parts. Now, one thing I will say did change back here on the receiver. So the reason I've shown you my folding stock AK is because the receiver we saw on the AK-20 had QD points on both sides of the receiver. When we looked inside the receiver, it still had the cuts for the underfolding stock, but they had repurposed them with QD points. So you can put a QD point on both sides of the receiver, okay? We're done talking about the receiver with the exception of the AK-20. We'll have multiple different stock types. We saw um, a PIC 1913 rail on the back of the receiver. We saw M4 buffer tubes. We saw PRS stocks. And we were also told that they're gonna do a fixed stock version, which we did see, but also some side folding stock options as well. So stock options for the AK-20 are gonna be fairly vast based upon what, we were see what we've seen and what we were told. Okay, so let's talk about the real meat and potatoes of what the AK-20 is. So laying here in front of me, I have kind of the backbone of the whole system. This is an aircraft grade aluminum. I don't know exactly what the aluminum is. We were just told it's aircraft grade. And this aluminum handrail truly floats the AK barrel. Other systems similar to this that have hit the market that you would bolt onto an existing AK, many of them clamp onto the barrel itself or attach some way to the barrel itself. This does not. This is more like an AR-15. And Let's try to explain that to you guys, all right? So with the receiver here, you're going to have an extension inside the trunnion that will fit inside this handguard. So on top, this is where the gas tube is going to ride. We'll, we'll delve into that here in a minute. Here on this component, you can see two dimples. 
That's going to match with connection points we'll show you here on the handguard in a moment. Then there's another dimple on the bottom. We'll show you how that interfaces with the handguard here in a moment. Just know that this part is permanently affixed to the, the front trunnion of the rifle and the receiver. So this is where everything's going to float off this component right here. The handguard is two piece and there's going to be two different options. You're going to have a version that has this lower aluminum piece with M-lock rail sections all the way around it. And then you'll have another option that is a polymer handguard that's also heat shielded. Now, I really like the way the polymer handguard looked on the, on the uh, prototype rifle. But if you're looking for, uh, you know, mounting a whole bunch of optics, lasers, lights, vertical grips, you're going to want to opt for this. But just know that there is a polymer handguard version that's heat shielded that will be available. Now, this system is actually a two-part system. So I'm going to go ahead and take it apart for you here so you can see how it would work. This part is going to stay on either the polymer handguard version or the aluminum handguard version. And this would sit right here on the rifle. So as you can see, the pick rail extends out over the top cover of the rifle. It's going to sit very close, but we took apart the demo rifle and put it back together. And the fact that it's here and it sits relatively low over the, 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 uh, the top cover, it does not impede the ability to disassemble and reassemble the rifle. It's short enough and has enough leeway to, to make it so it's very easy to do. But if you take a look at this component now, you can see where these two dimples have mounting points there. It's going to set inside like this. And this is what's going to give you your rigid 1913 rail across the top, because keep in mind, this part's going to be rigidly held by the receiver. And then the dimple on the bottom here matches a dimple on the handguard right there. And we're making some assumptions here because we weren't able to take the en entire gun apart. We just asked them to send us the pieces so we could kind of show you guys basically how this works. Whoops. Almost dropped everything. All right. So now this piece would still be on the rifle and then you would have the polymer hand guard and this would still remain. All right. So let's put the two back together here really quick. Now, the intent we were told was just leave the handguard on the gun. It's not necessary to take the handguard off nor the top rail to clean the gun or do any type of maintenance. And we'll talk about that when we get into the gas system. So what, besides the rail, which, you know, most of you are going right now, well, it's a rail, big deal. Congratulations. No, there's much more going on up here. So we have this block back here. This is the gas tube that's going to replace the standard AK gas tube that sets inside here. Now, this is not a final machined product, so I can't slide this in, but just know that this will move into this part here, okay? But it's not gonna rigidly hold this gas tube. The gas tube will be able to be pulled out, all right? So it's not pinned, it's not permanently held into place. On the other side, where the gas block would normally be, we have a new gas block. And this will set only a couple of millimeters inside of that front gas block and it's floated. So it's floated back here. It's not permanently held in place and it's floated here and is free to move once final fitting is done. It fits a little bit snugly now because these are not final com fit components, but that will comprise your gas tube system. All right. And then of course your standard AK bolt carrier will have the gas piston run down this tube into this gas block. The gas block is interesting because it has an adjustable gas regulator. Now they're going to offer the AK-20 in different barrel lengths. They're going to offer it in an 8.5 inch barrel. They're going to offer it in a 10.5 inch barrel. Then they're going to offer it in a 16.3 inch barrel. Now anything under 16 inches, they're considering a short barrel and the gas block and adjustment is going to have a different function than it would have on the full length rifle barrel. So let's talk about the short barrel diversion first. So on the short barreled version with high velocity ammo, you're going to have one gas port setting. The next gas port setting is going to be what they call the blind gas port setting. And this is really cool because it's designed for use with subsonic ammunition. When you put it in this position, when you fire the gun, the bolt doesn't move at all. So you don't get that loud motion of the bolt cycling on the gun, which is actually quite loud. And when we get one of these rifles to actually test, we'll show you what the difference is on the sound meter. We're using the Fime Group imported Brown Bear 196 grain subsonic ammunition. 
And right now, the rifle is set to its subsonic setting, which will allow the rifle to function normally with gas. If I turn the gas setting to this position, now it'll still fire, but it will not kick out the spent casing for maximum suppression and quietness. But you can, you can definitely hear the difference even we took our ear pro off while we are in the Nevada desert test firing it. When we didn't have that bolt moving back and forth, forth we can definitely hear a difference. We'll see what that meter's like later when we get a test rifle. And then we have the last setting, uh, which is the subsonic with a suppressor setting. And if you'll notice right here on the front of the gas block, we have 24 millimeter threads. And we'll talk more about the suppressors that they're launching in conjunction with the AK-20 rifle that are meant to work together. All right, so now let's talk about the long barreled version. It has the same gas block. It's gonna have a different gas plug on it, which is something you can take out, all right? And it's gonna have different ports in it. And for the long barreled version, you're gonna have a high velocity or a standard rifle ammunition load type setting. So that would be your wolf ball or your golden tiger, whatever it is you like to shoot. Then you're gonna have another setting, which is the high velocity with a suppressor. And that's gonna reduce the amount of gas to the gun. So with the baffled suppressor on the end of the barrel, you're not over gassing the gun and causing the bolt carrier to slam into the rear of the receiver. And then finally, you're gonna have a subsonic setting um, for use with a suppressor, all right? So those are the different settings for the gas blocks on the different length rifles. Now, we already talked about the two different types of handguards. We talked about uh, the aluminum, the polymer. We talked about the gas block. We'll talk about the suppressor here in a moment, but I wanna make another point clear here. We can't really easily demonstrate it because the, 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 uh, the components aren't finally machined, but you don't have to take the rail off the gun to clean it, and you don't have to take the gas tube out to clean it. You can punch it with you know, like a 20 gauge shotgun cleaning kit, but if you really want to take the gas tube out of the rifle because it's floating freely back here on the receiver side, and it's floating freely in the gas block on the front, you'll be able to take your gas plug out and from the front of the rifle, you'll be able to push, and I'm gonna have to really push on it because it's not finally fit, but you'll be able to push it right out the front of the gas block if you really want to. On the rear, it has a flat cut on it, so when you push it back in, it's gonna stop, so it won't push all the way out the backside, but you can remove it for cleaning if you really desire that functionality. And there's one other thing I should point out about the gas block. They're going to offer gas blocks that you will be able to drill your own port settings in. So I've given you the breakdown of what they're gonna offer from the factory, but you can get just a undrilled gas port or gas plug and drill your own hole sizes to gas your rifle however you want if you're the tinkerer type. Now also, the first rifles that they release are gonna come out of what they're calling their custom shop. And they're going to have components primarily made out of block steel like this. So the gas block that I've been showing you, uh, the gas plug I've been showing you, all those components are gonna be manufactured from this initially, but once they get to the production stuff, they're gonna have uh, cast components that will be less expensive to produce. And that's gonna bring the price down on the final production guns. So the first guns, collectors are gonna want them. After the first guns are off the market, then the average shooter will be looking probably to buy those. You'll notice there is a slight difference, which I, I thought was interesting. This is the machined component for the custom shop gun, but the actual final gas plug for the production rifle will have a slightly different profile. Now you have a hole in here that's big enough to accept the tip of a bullet to turn it, even if it has some carbon caking going on. On the final production version, you're gonna have the same bullet hole uh, there, so you can put a, a round in there to get leverage, but it also has a tab on it that you can get plenty of leverage on it just with an index finger and a thumb. So now, let's talk about two other things, the suppressor 
and another caliber. So these are going to be available in 7.62 by a 39. They may offer them in different calibers in the future, but the other caliber they told us they were going to manufacture the gun in is uh, 12.7 by 42 millimeter. And you may be scratching your head thinking, is that a dish go round? No, it's actually known as 50 Beowulf. So if you pick up one of the rifles in 12.7 by 42, you're going to want to buy 50 Beowulf ammunition to feed it uh, because Alexander Arms has a patent on that name. They can't use it, so it's just known as 12.7 by 42, 50 Beowulf. So you'll have that option. Now, let's talk about this gas block and this 24 millimeter thread here. So, like I said, they're going to launch the AK-20 with its own series of suppressors. The suppressors are of the over-the-barrel type, and we've seen that done in other rifles in U.S. military service like the Mark 12. They're going to use that same system where it has two connection points. It's going to slide over the barrel. It's going to shorten the overall length of the suppressor, but still maintaining a large volume. It's going to mount back here, but it's also going to be supported on the other end by the muzzle device. And so I was asking them why they went with that particular configuration, and they said, for the reason I just gave you, it's going to shorten the overall length of the gun, it's going to maintain high volume in the can, it gives it a larger blast area, so when that bullet leaves the barrel, those, those, uh, that first blast of gas has a much larger area to go into, and presumably it's going to give better suppression. I can't speak to that because I didn't have a sound meter with me. When we get a test sample of the rifle, we'll put it on the meter and find out just how it works. But on a machine gun or something like that, where you're getting things really, really hot, uh, metal tends to droop when it gets really, really hot. You've seen some of uh, Eric, Iraq veterans' videos when he's doing the meltdown tests. You'll notice the barrels droop considerably once they get really, really hot. Well, as the gun gets hot with two points of support with the suppressor, because suppressors get hot very, very quickly, you're going to lessen the likelihood of suppressor droop and getting baffle strikes. At, like, at least that's what they told us. So, when are they going to release these things? Well, we don't know. Uh, there's going to be tons of coverage at SHOT Show 2020, okay? So, what we've shared with you here in this video is what we were told about this new product to announce prior to SHOT Show, but when we actually get to SHOT Show, hopefully we'll have pricing and availability uh, regarding the new rifles. So, we can't give you that information right now, but be sure to watch the coverage on YouTube from SHOT Show 2020, because I can imagine after this video goes live, all the AK fanatics are going to go running over to the Arsenal booth to try to learn more about the AK-20. We do plan on going to SHOT Show ourselves this year, first time in quite a few years. And if we can, we're going to swing by the Arsenal booth and see if we can learn more information ourselves about the new AK-20 rifle. With regards to accuracy, that's what I'm really interested in. Because with a traditional AK, when you put this gas tube on the rifle and turn down the lever, what you're actually doing is pretensioning the barrel. It's, it's this, this gas tube fits in here very snugly and it's pushing forward and down on the barrel. When you're firing the gun due to thermal expansion, the different materials being used are going to expand differently. And some people would say, and probably it's true, I'm not an engineer, but the fact that this is preloaded with tension and different materials with thermal expansion, it's going to cause the barrel to be pushed by, um, by this system. And so to get around that by Arsenal free-floating the gas tube, much like um, a gas tube on an AR-15 direct gas impingement rifle free floats, it's pinned in the front, but it floats in the rear so the barrel's free to move and that gas tube can freely move back and forth with thermal expansion and barrel whip during firing. This rifle actually is free-floated on both sides, not pinned on either side, so the barrel's still free to move, and this isn't going to influence the barrel harmonics, and it's not pretensioned like a conventional gas tube. So I'm really interested to see what type of accuracy I can get out of one of the AK-20s, which is why I spent so much time in the desert shooting the DMR version of this rifle, which had the PRS stock on it and the aluminum handguard from a bipod. All right, guys, um, that's it. We hope to get some more information about the AK-20 at SHOT Show. And if we do, we'll share that information with you. We'll be um, you know, posting stuff on Instagram. So be sure to follow us on Instagram if you don't already. And of course, we'll be posting a video once we get a chance. Guys, thank you for 12 years of support. If you'd like to support us here on the Military Arms Channel and our mission to bring you as much unbiased information as we possibly can. And if you like behind the scenes information, which we were posting some stuff like this about this project uh, to our, our supporters, both on YouTube and Patreon, um, consider becoming a supporter of the channel. You can do that a couple of different ways. 
Right now, under the video player, there's a little join button, and it's now present even on mobile apps for Droid devices and iPhones. Click that join button and consider joining us in our membership program here on YouTube. And once you do that, the community section will light up with content that you otherwise couldn't see. And over on Patreon, we have a link down below. If you choose to become a Patreon supporter, you're going to find all sorts of blog posts and, and behind the scenes information and much more personal information about what we do here at the Military Arms Channel and things like that. A lot of behind the scenes stuff. So consider doing that. Joining us over on the YouTube channel with the membership button, with the join button, or clicking the Patreon button down below. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. All right, folks, we'll see you at SHOT Show 2020 in just a few days. Thanks for watching.